Coming up, there's a new player in the unleaded Avgas game, and this is a name you know. There may be a whole cloud of drones sharing our airspace. Learning to fly like a hawk could save your life, and how not to do what these guys did. The OK Live this week begins in just a moment. Now there are three, and the third is an 800-pound gorilla in the aviation fuel business. Hello everyone, I'm Tom Haynes. Thanks for joining us on AOP Live this week. Big news on the race to get the lead out. Shell Aviation announced this week that it has created a new 100-octane unleaded aviation fuel. This is the first major oil company to get into the unleaded race. The new fuel has passed preliminary tests and Lycoming engines and a Piper Saratoga. Earlier, I talked to Shell about its proposed replacement for 100 low lead. We must have gone through two or three hundred, two or three thousand, I should say, different formulations. Uh, the octane is something that uh, pilots and, and, and OEMs are very interested in, the detonation performance, and, you know, that's remarkably similar. The distillation performance, things like cold flow properties, is something that's also been important. We have one or two properties that are slightly different, but we're really pleased with the way this, uh, this, this, this formulation has tested so far. Will it be able to be intermixed with 100 low lead uh, in the future once it's introduced? Yeah, that, that's, one of the, that's one of the requirements that we have placed on our, our uh, technology team uh, that co-mingling was possible. So the testing we've done so far has, says yes. It can be blended up and blended down uh, w without any performance challenges. Is it uh, proprietary? and you will be licensing it potentially to other manufacturers, is that correct? Um, it, it's, it's really early days, but uh, and at this stage it's proprietary, but again, uh, what, what, what we hear from the marketplace, what we hear from our, our customers, is that uh, they want to have this fuel readily available, and we'd like it to be as widely available as possible. So we could see, uh, a, a, we could see a, a licensing arrangement where it is uh, made available to other manufacturers, yes. Those details, really have to be to be worked out and discussed. We, at this stage, are focused on trying to get approval for formulation as quickly as possible. You can see more of that interview on AOPALive.org, and you can read more about it on AOPA.org. The Shell Fuel will now be submitted to FAA testing. The agency will be evaluating multiple candidate fuels, including some of the other no-lead fuels you've heard about. That testing will ultimately lead to certification and qualification data that will be used to approve fuels for use throughout the fleet. But sit back. That's expected to happen not until about 2018. The Department of Homeland Security has ticked off pilots, and now DHS is ticking off some U.S. senators. Not a good move. DHS is the parent agency for Customs and Border Protection. And as we've told you many times on this program, CBP agents have been stopping and searching general aviation aircraft for no apparent valid reason. Two senators, Pat Roberts of Kansas and Jim Risch of, Ohio, of Idaho, sent a letter to the Secretary of Homeland Security asking what the heck CBP is doing. No answer. So now, a harsher letter. The senator said that your agents seem undeterred in stopping GA air aircraft where no illegal conduct is afoot. They gave Secretary Beers a December 16 deadline to list all GA aircraft stops and explain the probable cause CBP agents use to search the aircraft. And while DHS isn't saying anything, the FAA is talking these days. Six days after AOPA told the agency that it must run its sleep apnea policy change through the legally required rulemaking process, the FAA released a so-called fact sheet, and they said, oh gosh, this really isn't a policy change at all. Well, we consider it a significant policy change that has significant costs, upwards of 100 to 300 million dollars, which would be cost bared solely by the pilots. And that we consider unfair because any change to certification process needs to identify all the costs, but also all the benefits. And in this case, we don't identify any benefit to aviation safety. Meanwhile, that bill in Congress to force the FAA to take the proper rulemaking steps has cleared committee. The full House of Representatives will now vote on the bipartisan bill. Well, if you're tired of doing slow flight the same old way, here's a new twist. As we know, learning to control the airplane at slow speeds is essential for being a safe pilot, but particularly flight instructors know that it's not always easy to get a student comfortable and confident right near the stall. 
But AOPA Pilot Senior Editor Dave Hirschman has a fun way to master control with the stall horn blaring. Practicing slow flight can be a drag, but here's a game to make it fun and relevant. Hover like a hawk. At a safe altitude, point your airplane into the wind, slow down, and imitate a hawk hovering over a target on the ground. Fly by feel looking outside the cockpit, and constantly maneuver to get your GPS ground speed as low as you possibly can. On a windy day in a slow airplane, you might even be able to get your ground speed all the way down to zero. If you stall, recover normally. Hovering like a hawk improves your sense of how airplanes behave at critically low air speeds and high angles of attack, and that can be a real lifesaver. Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live. Thanks, Dave. It looks like a lot of fun out there. When we come back, shoot. Oh, excuse me. Well, we'll explain. And an army of drones in your airspace and at your door. Welcome back to AOPA Live this week. If you think the idea of autonomous drones floating around our airspace is scary, now be prepared to be very afraid. Last Sunday on the CBS show 60 Minutes, Amazon unveiled its latest project, little automated helicopters delivering packages directly to your door. Amazon chief Jeff Bezos thinks he can have them flying in four or five years, but he admits he needs FAA approval, and he'll also have to satisfy AOPA. The association's rock-solid position is that drones, unmanned aerial systems in official ease, must meet the same safety standards as manned aircraft, and that means the ability to sense and avoid other aircraft and do it without requiring new equipment on our airplanes. You can read more about it on AOPA.org, and you can see more on the Amazon drones at 60minutesovertime.com. Well, there are times in every pilot career when he says, oh, sugar, or something like that. This was probably one of them. A modified 747 called a Dreamlifter landed a, a bit short of its intended airport of McConnell Air Force Base in Wichita about nine miles short of a matter of fact, at Jabara, a GA airport with a 6,100-foot runway. The crew was so situationally unaware that they first thought they had landed at Beachfield, another nearby airport, and all three are close and have similar alignments. And if you've never, ever lined up on the wrong one runway, you're more perfect than I am. But it shouldn't happen, and we ask our chief flight instructor for some tips on how to keep it from happening to you. Starting off with the low time VFR pilot, the best thing to do is proper pre-flight planning. Um, to look at not just your airport that you're going to, but also the other airports that are in the area, and um, get familiar with what other fields you should be seeing or you expect that might be close to the one that you're going to. There are several different apps or online resources where you have actual depictions of the airport. So as you get close to the airport, you'll be checking the runway number first off to make sure that it aligns with the runway that you expected to be landing at, because in a lot of these cases, the runway will be off, but just 10 degrees. But it's enough to change the runway number, so make sure that the runway number is correct. If you have a GPS on board, you should use that to back up your flight planning. If you have a VOR on board and there's a VOR on the field or nearby, you should be able to use that. And if an instructor hasn't taught you about ILS frequencies, uh, you should ask one of them to teach you that because if there is an ILS on the runway, that's the best thing to tune in and identify. Even if you're shooting a visual approach, to have that in and you can tell that you're lined up with the correct runway at the correct airport. By the way, they did get the Dreamlifter off Jabara and over to McConnell the next day with a different crew. They had to close a road to protect cars from the 47's jet blast. Now, we don't know if the original crew of that Dreamlifter will be looking for a new job, but we do know that there are signs of growth again in the aviation industry, and that means new aviation jobs becoming available. You can find some of those jobs on AOPA's free jobs board. You can find it at jobs.aopa.org, and you'll find job listings from aviation businesses across the nation. You can post your resume for free so that employers can find you. 
And now a special deal for employers just this month. You can post your job listings for free. Email jobboard at aopa.org to find out more. And finally, it's that time of year again. Have you had your flu shot? I have. In this edition of Fly Well, Dr. Jonathan Sackier explains how that nasty virus can infect pilots and what you can do to ward it off. Influenza, or flu, the name of the virus family responsible for causing both the flu, lots of days off work, and simultaneously inspiring the battle of the sexes. Everyone's heard about swine flu or bird flu, but actually all flu originates in animals and is passed between them, where domestic animals and humans are in close contact, such as in parts of the world where economic circumstances demand this. The bugs mutate as they jump species and become capable of making us miserable. Rather like the common cold, it is spread by close personal contact, touching someone with the flu or something they have touched and infected, and then bringing your hand to your nose or mouth, or of course, getting coughed or sneezed on. Sometimes flu is a mild illness that may be difficult to distinguish from a cold, but it can be serious and even fatal, especially in the young, the old and frail, or those on drugs that suppress the immune system. The flu usually arrives fast, produces an obvious fever, chills, makes you feel generally unwell, aching muscles, headache, fatigue and sleepiness, combined with cough, sore throat and runny nose complete the miserable picture. Like a cold, most flu sticks around for 14 days. Without proper care, secondary pneumonia, bronchitis, ear or sinus infection can follow. Take this seriously. Every year, flu kills thousands of Americans. Prevention, as with colds, avoid people who look a bit under the weather and do not be generous with your viral load. Stay at home when sick. Get vaccinated every year, as long as no medical reasons suggest otherwise, and have your family members do the same. If at risk of serious consequences, consider talking to your doctor about one of the antiviral medications that taken early in the course might reduce the impact or length of illness. Flying should be deferred as with colds, but recovery will probably take longer. Now to my comment about the battle of the sexes. I believe that man flu is real. You see, ladies, we poor men truly are the weaker sex with less adequate immune systems, and we therefore suffer all the more. So please, don't hate me. Pamper your man with that chicken soup and hot toddy, as long as he does the same for you, of course, when you get it. Thanks, Jonathan. Good advice, as always. And that's a wrap for us to this week. Thanks for watching. And remember, cover your sneeze or cough. Wash your hands. Eat your chicken soup. It couldn't hurt. We'll see you next Thursday right back here.